The most typical kind of bee society is one in which there is a, a mother who starts the nest by herself. She actually does a lot of work. And she makes a little her first brood, which is a group of little daughters, much smaller than herself. And they emerge as adults, and instead of leaving home, they stay home and help their mother. And we call the mother the queen, and we call the daughters the workers. And then there are other societies, like the ones that the carpenter bees live in, which are based on a different kind of uh, dynamic in which there's a queue, a reproductive queue, and only the alpha female gets to lay eggs. And everybody else basically waits in the queue until the alpha female pops off and then they all move one step up the queue and then the next bee in line becomes the alpha female and everybody waits for her to pop off. And Males don't really live in groups. That's an interesting thing about bee societies. They don't live in societies. They don't live in groups. They interact with each other. There are some bees where the males all go to the same place to sleep together at night. It's very cute. You see them all cuddled up to each other in flowers and things. Bees live in groups for the same reasons that many animals live in groups. And the reason that the reasons that animals live in groups usually have something to do with acquiring resources that they need for raising kids. In bees, one resource that they really need is a nest. Um, and the second set of resources that they need is food for their babies. So we have three reasons. Sharing resources to be more efficient, working together and cooperating because that's more efficient. And then the third one, which is a little less positive, which exploitation, that sometimes forcing others to work for you is a really good way of, of producing extra kids.